You put her here, she gave it to me, and I had no choice but to eat it. Wow. Here's what we need to know. Until you take full responsibility for your sin, the problem can't be fixed. 1 John 1, 9 tells us, if we confess our sins, he, the Lord, is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Our job is to confess. God's job is to forgive. Folks, we've got to confess our sins. You see, the Lord will not forgive the sins we're blaming on others or on other things. He can't. It looks a little bit like the boy whose mother caught him eating the cookies she told him not to eat. She said, I thought I told you not to eat the cookies. The boy replied, Mama, I just got up on the chair to smell the cookies and my teeth got caught in them. (laughs) Anybody ever hear that before? (laughs) One time my mom had a a cookie container and, and... she was coming in the room and I took a big bite of one of the cookies and put it back <laughs> so as not to get caught. And the bite radius was exactly mine. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't hard to figure it out. <laughs> Who bit the cookie? No, nah, it might have been my brother. His bite radius is close to mine. You know, that's the way a lot of us look at sin. We give excuses rather than owning up to it and seeking the Lord's forgiveness. When the source of sin is within us, it's our problem. Satan can only arrange the temptation. (sighs) Might also be helpful to understand how temptation works. We may not get this finished today, but we'll get started and then uh, finish next week looking at the steps of temptation. Bible is helpful in this matter of temptation and sin because the word shows us how it works. And in God's word, we learn that sinning is never just an event. Sinning is a process, a series of steps set into motion to produce sin. The process starts with desire or lust. Remember verse 14? But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. The first step in the process of temptation is we go from desire to enticement. Sin starts with a desire. Some translations you call that word lust. An evil desire that tempts us to sin. You know, there's tons of words in the Bible used for desire, but they're not always used in a negative way. Because our God-given desires are not evil in and of themselves. For example, God has given us a desire for food, for sexual fulfillment, for sleep. These are good desires. Without them, something would be lost. You can't live unless you eat. Without sexual relationships, there would be no procreation of the race. And without sleep, you can't function properly. These desires only become evil when we seek to satisfy them in illegitimate ways. Desire only becomes temptation when you allow yourself to be carried away and enticed to fulfill the desire sinfully. God's word uses some pretty picturesque language to describe this enticement. We won't look at those reference today, but one picture is that of hunters and fishermen luring their prey into a trap or onto a hook. You see, bears don't go looking for bear traps. They get caught in the trap when they go for the bait, the food. Likewise, fish don't go looking for hooks. I wish they did. They get snagged by the hook and dragged to the surface when they bite down on the bait. Likewise, Satan baits his trap so he can ensure us, ensnare us, and drag us into sin. The purpose of Satan's bait is not only to lure us to sin, but also to hide from us the consequences of sin. If you're a good fisherman, you hide the hook in the bait so the fish thinks that all he's getting is a free meal. Fisherman is nowhere in sight, so that's not the problem. The bait is either alive or moving, 
or the fisherman is moving the hook a little bit to catch the fish's attention. And when it's done right, the only thing the fish sees is the bait. But when the fish gives in to the enticement and bites the bait, he gets a lot more than he bargained for. The fish bites into the consequences of his actions. It bites into the intention of the fisherman, which is not good for the fish, because the fisherman plans to fry and clean and eat the fish. The fish is actually biting into his own death. Instead of getting a juicy worm, what the fish gets is the fisherman, who doesn't care anything about that. All he cares about is a hot frying pan. In the same way, Satan doesn't care about anything except enticing you to sin and getting you hooked. So we get dragged into sin when we allow our desires to lead us straight into Satan's deception. We don't see the consequences of our sin, but Satan does. Now, you may not do a whole lot of fishing, so let me change the imagery a little bit to something that most of us know about. A lot of us bite on the hook of MasterCard or American Express or Visa simply because they threw it out at us. They baited the line. Man, it looks good. Charge now and pay later. Your exceptional credit entitles you to this card. So people don't worry too much about the consequences of out of control spending with credit cards because consequences come later. Now don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that credit cards are evil in and of themselves. I'm saying that companies know how to frame an offer that looks awfully good. They know how to entice the potential buyer. I guess they have some game film too. It's just like how Satan enticement turns our normal desires into lust. The normal desire of hunger really only becomes evil when it turns into gluttony. Our desire for sex becomes evil when it leads to immorality. Our desire for sleep becomes evil when it's transformed into laziness. Can I say again that Satan entices us to sin by hiding from us the consequences of our sin? And remember what scripture says is the consequence? Oh yeah, it's the frying pan, isn't it? It's it's death. He invited Adam and Eve to eat some delicious looking fruit. He didn't say anything about God's judgment. He didn't say anything about being kicked out of the garden. He didn't say there would be pain in childbirth. He didn't say there would be hard labor. He didn't say that one son would kill the other son. He kind of left all that out. Satan simply said, Man, doesn't this fruit look delicious? But the desire turned evil, and Satan used the evil desire to entice and deceive our first parents. Maybe us too. Yes, from deception, the process of temptation degenerates into disobedience. So we go from temptation to disobedience and from disobedience, well, to death. I'd like us to take a look at the rest of that process next Sunday, Lord willing. Deception, disobedience. Get now and pay later, right? Live for today. We'll pay later. Ouch. 
Let's pray.